Welcome to Lessons 2.1 and 2.2, Objectives. Number one, you will learn how to create addition and subtraction fact families. Number two, you will use basic facts to solve fact extension problems. Fact families. Fact families can be formed with any three numbers, where two numbers are added to find a sum. In this example, the two numbers that I am adding are 9 and 8, and when I add these two numbers together, I get a sum or total to an addition problem of 17. The sum is always written next to the dot at the top of the fact triangle. Also, every math problem you do usually has a unit. A unit is what you are measuring or what you are counting. In this case, it is not a story problem, so I don't know the unit. If that happens, use your imagination. Maybe I want to pretend I'm counting toy cars. In that case, my unit would be cars. The important thing is that you are labeling your answers whenever you do math work. If you see this unit box, please make sure you write a unit in that spot. Why is it possible to write two addition facts? How, why is it that I could do 9 plus 8 equals 17 and also do 8 plus 9 equals 17? This is because of something called the commutative property of addition. In third grade, we call this the turnaround rule. It simply means if I do 9 plus 8 first to get 17, I could flip around the 9 and the 8 and do 8 first this time and do 8 plus 9 I'm still going to get that answer of 17. How does knowing an addition fact help you figure out a subtraction fact? 17 minus 9 equals. A good way to do subtraction is to think, how much would I need to add? How much would I need to add right here to the number 9 to get back up to the number 17? Think about your fact triangles. When we use our fact triangles, it helps our brain create a picture of this type of problem. If I know my facts and visualize the fact triangle, my 17 would be at the top because it's the largest number. One corner I would have a 9. I would just need to think, how much here in this corner would I need to add to this 9 to get up to 17? The answer is 8. Let's take a look at this fact triangle example. My largest number at the top, or my sum to the adding problem, is 16. In the bottom, I need to figure out what two numbers would I add together to get that number of 16. They've given me a 2. I need to figure out what would this number be. I could think to myself, how much would I need to add to the number 2 to get up to 16? Or I could think of it as a subtraction problem and start with 16 and say, okay, if I'm going to go 16 minus 2 and count down two numbers, I would arrive at the answer of 14. Either way to think about how to solve the problem is just fine. Most of the time you will also need to write number models to show your thinking. If I start with addition, I could do 14 plus 2 gave me that answer at the top or that sum of 16. I can then turn these numbers around and do 2 plus 14 equals 16. My addition facts are done. Now I can do my subtraction facts. With subtraction, your largest number goes first. 16 minus, now I could either do 2 or I could pick 14. I'm going to choose 2 equals that other third number of 14. And I need to do another one. Again, with subtraction, your biggest number has to come first. There is no turnaround rule for subtraction. 16 minus 14 would give me that other number of 2. Your turn to practice. Please take out your math notebook. Copy the fact triangle and remember to pause the video. Your job is to figure out what the sum at the top of this fact triangle would be. 
It is also helpful if you write down your four number sentences. The number sentences won't appear in the quiz, but it's very good practice. So after you figure out what that missing number is, go ahead and see if you can do the four number models, two of them being addition and two of them being subtraction. When you are done, you can continue the video. We're now going to talk about fact extensions. Take a look at these three number models and look for patterns. What pattern do you see? All right, let's get started. If I solve it, 9 minus 3 would give me an answer of 6. I'm noticing in my second one, I still have a 9 and I still have a 3. What happened was we've added a 0 to the end. So instead of 9 ones minus 3 ones, when I put the 0 here, now I know I'm talking about 10s. Tens. 9 tens would be 90. Minus 3 tens would be 30. 90 minus 30 would give me an answer of 60. When I look at the next example, again I have my 9 minus 3. I know from my basic facts 9 minus 3 is 6. This time though, there's two zeros at the end of each number. This means I have hundreds. So nine hundreds would be nine hundred minus three hundreds or three hundred would give me an answer of six hundreds. Hundreds have two zeros at the end. This is called a fact extension. We use a basic fact to help us come up with some larger facts. How does knowing an addition or subtraction fact help us solve these problems? Here we'll start with the basic fact. We have 12 minus 5. We want to think about what the answer to that basic fact would be. That's correct. The answer is 7. And then we can use that to help us figure out these larger facts. Here I still have a 12 and I still have a 5. The only difference is I've added a zero at the end because I'm working with tens instead of ones. 12 minus 5 is 7, but really I have seven tens because we've added a zero at the end, so my answer is 70. This third one, I have 12 minus 5. This time, if we look, there's two zeros here. So now instead of working with tens, I'm working with hundreds. 12 take away 5 is still 7. I just have to add my zeros because I'm working with hundreds. 1200 minus 500 gives me an answer of 700. Let's take a look at another way to write some facts here. In these examples, the place values are written inside of the brackets. So the way to read this is 9 ones minus 3 ones. This would look like 9 minus 3, which would give me an answer of 6. If I look at the next one, now instead of ones, you'll see it's tens. 9 tens minus 3 tens. Okay, that would be an answer of 6 tens or 60. If I look at my third example, I'm moving into hundreds. I have nine hundreds. If I want to visualize that as a number, I would simply write nine hundred minus three hundreds. Again, visualizing it as a number would be three hundred. Okay, nine hundreds minus three hundred would be six hundreds or as a number, six hundred. Let's take a look at another type of fact extension. How are the last two problems related to the first problem? I have in my first problem 11 minus 7 equals 4. The second one is 21 minus 7 equals 14. And the third one I have 81 minus 7 equals 74. What I'm noticing is that there is a number 7 which is not changing. It's the same in every single problem. I'm also noticing that these first numbers are changing. I went from 11 up to 21. That's an increase of 10. When I look at the answer, 
from when I jumped from 4 to 14, that was also an increase of 10 from that first basic fact. If I think about the last one, I have 81 minus 7 equals 74. 81, think about the basic fact here too, okay, 81 and 11. 81 is 70 more than 11. If I know that 11 minus 7 was equal to 4, I have now 81 minus 7. If I remember that that was equal to 4, I know that 81 is 70 more. So I'm going to add 70 more to this first answer of 4 to arrive at 74. Quiz question number 2. Again, get out your math notebook and copy these problems. You have 7 minus 5 equals 2, 70 minus 50 equals 20, 700 minus 500 equals, that one is your job to solve it. So think about going from ones to tens to hundreds as you solve these problems. Quiz question number three. This is a fact extension where we don't have those zeros, okay, but there is a pattern with the numbers. Your first one, 11 minus 6 equals 5, that's your basic fact. Then you went to 21 minus 6 equals 15. And finally, that third one, instead of 21, now we have 51. We're still only subtracting 6, but think about what the answer would be. Once you have finished that, please log back into the website to take your quiz, plug your answers from your math notebook into the quiz, and then you will have finished your homework for the night, and I will see you in class tomorrow.